It's the Controller Bob, Captain Joe Show. Controller Bob and Captain Joe Show. Controller Bob and Captain Joe. Controller Bob and Captain Joe Show. This is one of my favorite songs. People are going to sit there and listen to this and go, hey. Oh, so bad. You're so smooth. It's sort of like your crosswind landing. <laughs> we had three gear down. Three gear <laughs> we did have three green. Uh, <laughs> phone's on. We hey, 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 hey. Right. We're on break. Oh, woof. All right. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, to, welcome back to the to world headquarters of M08. Do you know how lucky we are to be here? Is this luck? This is luck. And everybody who watches and, gets And a we free were asked to come here. M08 That's what's M08 that. guitar pick. And oh, we want to take Jason, that home with yeah, us. Send Jason we're gonna, a message. We're going to throw that out to our crowd. That's right. They're cheap. They're like a yeah, penny yeah, if you buy yeah, 4 yeah, million yeah, of them, right? Yeah. There's no M08 logo on them, but just send you a, a cheap pick and a yeah, video, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, we order them by the minutes. Anyway. Hey, so basically, what are we going to talk about today? Well, in our previous episode, we talked about that's right. We did controllers and controller brakes, right? And, uh, Relief briefings for controllers, right? right? Mm -hmm. and it was so, a lot about controllers, right? So now I want the controller to say what, right? What bothers you about pilots and what bothers me is when, from a controller standpoint, yes, yes, is yes. when your CFI is yelling at you about getting off the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> how often does that? that, that the biggest controller. How often does pilots. that happen? Every stinking flight. But anyway, you said <laughs> <laughs> that's my biggest complaint as a controller about pilots. But <laughs> so, you know, realistic, realistically speaking, though, um, I think most the pressure, you know, people when they talk, I'm going to ramble on here for a minute, but the reality is that um, there are a lot of competing things that controllers are constantly being dealt with and providing a service and making sure we're getting A to B and we have, we're trying to keep airplanes separate and these kind of things. And so you're under a lot of pressure. Is, is you have a supervisor over your shoulder. Is that like your CFI in the right seat uh, yelling at you? Yeah, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll be in, they're in the room constantly watching what's going on and, mm -hmm. and, and gauging whether or not somebody needs help or any kind of assistance they might need kind of deal. And so you're constantly reminded you're providing a service. You're trying to do the best you can, and I know that some of the guys uh, and controllers that we I work with, they'll sit there and and they they need pause to listen, and I need you to listen. You've heard that before. Yeah. I wouldn't. That's a complaint I don't necessarily have, but a lot of complaints I hear. Best if they could just listen better, if they would uh, try to hear what I'm saying, and that goes back to talking on the radio, because. As pilots are starting to learn to talk on the radio, there's so many things that are going through your brain when you're trying to talk on the radio, fly the airplane, navigate, all these things. Chew gum. Chew gum. And it's tough. And um, listen to your controller. And listen to your controller. It's very, and very your challenging. And instructor. Yeah. It's hard. I, I don't – I hey, pilots need to be um, safe as they could possibly be, and listening to us is part of is that. Is there program. another – hobby or job that requires more multitasking than a pilot well this is going to sound really interesting that you should bring that up because um i waited tables if you can believe that and there is competing interests in your server oh that would be a good big time analogy. because you as an example a server would bring out the dinners and you would go uh can i have some ketchup and you'd ketchup go, oh, a1 right? salt and pepper something like that well, on a big picture, it's a pretty low priority, but for you, it's really important. Well, I've got to take an order. I've got to meet, you know, you see these compete interests. I've got to run back to the kitchen, all these things. Meanwhile, you're waiting for your ketchup. Now, you're going to be upset because the ketchup didn't come right away. So as me being a, a server, I have to juggle those things, bring the ketchup to you right away, you're going to be happier. So I've got to constantly compete different priorities and the controllers the same way priorities are constantly changing the list revolves 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 and it's so hard especially when you take um somebody brand new my one of my first trainers instant 
the minute he plugged in, I knew it was going to be great, and he turned out to be a great controller. But he was scared to talk on a radio. He never talked to an airplane in his life. And so you're kind of at ground control. And you're Imagine that, a controller scared to talk to airplanes. Yeah, well, it happens. Your first time, it's well, a big deal, yeah, you, right? It's, it's like your first growing, time. Growing first pains. Time. Oh, sure, right. And so he gets, he's kind of like, what do, you know, it's just this moment. This is the moment he starts his career talking to his very first airplane. I remember just to, as of yesterday. And I said, all right, let's rehearse. And I'll be the pilot, and you tell me what you're going to say. I go, hey, we're, we're here at the clearing up at runway eight to at uh, Gulf to the ramp. And, and he goes, what do you say? Well, you taxi the ramp via Alpha Hotel. I like, oh, all right, great, do that. I said, right, let's practice one more time. Hey, we're clearing up at Gulf for, you know, Charlie Five. I said, right, right, taxi the ramp via, I said, like, perfect. The pilot lands, pulls off. Hey, we're here at Gulf, going to Charlie Five. He uh, uh, it's panics. <laughs> I'm going, you just rehearsed that. Tell him what you told me. And he just panicked. And uh, I'll never forget it. And, of course, I said, God. And so I have an override feature. And I said to the pilot, I said, I just want you to know that was his very first transmission as a controller. He goes, hey, surprisingly enough, that was his first transmission as co-pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it settled everybody down. It, we all had a big laugh about it. He turned out to be fantastic. Um, it was really kind of neat, and um, so that was kind of neat from a controller standpoint. The priorities and the, the brain's just completely going crazy. It happens in an airplane. It happens in life and in, in most things. When you feel like you're under a lot of pressure, air traffic control is really no different. So that's kind of the interesting part about that. So, you know, we just got to listen. We're terrible listeners, too, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. What's the strangest thing you've heard over the radio? Mmm, jeez, strangest thing. Um... Hmm. Not the moaning on your landings. No, not the moaning on my landings. That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, one, of the, one of the things Jason doesn't show on his videos is when he talks about landings, you know, which are very good, by the way. Don't think I didn't watch them, which I did, uh, was great landings. But the strangest thing I've heard on the radio, um, I'll tell you exactly. Stuck hmm. mics are the strangest. Oh, that is, that's on a good one. Oh. oh. So let me tell you. Guy stuck Mike. He's flying through the middle of the state, and he is your in a. I think he's in a. He's got small airplane. Yeah, bonanza. We'll, Baron. we'll call it a bonanza. It could have been something. Else. It doesn't matter. He's driving through the middle of the state. Stuck Mike. Starts doing the whole captain over doing the tour business. And there's the stuck. And, that, and on the frequency. Well, of course, stuck mics for controllers is absolutely the most frustrating. Oh, it's thing ever, yeah. Right. Sometimes your transmitter can blow through the stuck mic and get everybody who's listening off the freak to an alternate. And that's the objective. That's what you right. try to do. If somebody's stuck mic, you immediately call out to everybody around, say, hey, put everybody on this frequency, right. not that one. And But the stuck mic's still going. You put it on the speaker. But this guy was going crazy. And then he starts ripping controllers. I flew into that airport. Oh, my God, that was the worst controller ever. And, of course, we're the controllers. It's, yeah, this is a good one. <sighs> We were sitting there. We were laughing, but he was just, it was. And just kept reeling it just, in. Oh, my goodness. And it went on for 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes. And at some point, somebody realized, I think you're stuck. Yeah. And, of course, what happens when you realize, you've been stuck, Mike, before. Right? Oh, I've been stuck. Well, the right. old the old radios, the old King radios, mm -hmm. the 170s, well, they didn't have a little red dot or a TX button like no. the new. Um, and then as the intercoms came out over the years, they put a little red dot, so if you're transmitting, it was red, and if it was just right. intercom, it'd be green. And those they came out probably late '80s, early '90s. Right. But before that, I mean, when I learned to fly, we didn't even have headsets. The 150s didn't. Oh, have intercom. you had the mic with the speaker. The mic with the speaker. Right. And that's. And you might have been stuck. And right? uh, I remember my first David Clark headset, 1040s. Mm. I called them vice grips. Yeah. But, How many people are still flying with those? Um, the, my original headset's still in the back of the airplane. Yeah. Uh, David Clark, probably the best doorbell headset on the market. And they still make them. They've been making them for, what, 75 Ever. years? Right. It's it's signature, right? And those headsets, I've had them, David Clark rebuild twice. They I still use them in my rental fleet. Well, it's interesting because, yeah, and I never touch them because they hurt my head. But that's an adversity. Well, that's together. because, you know, well, anyway. your wife, you know, this is another story. His wife calls me and, uh, about Thanksgiving. Says, oh, she did, yeah, right. Uh, and and uh, wanted, wait, wait, wanted a headset. Wait, she got your number? Oh, you know, you just, wow, hey, I am man. the wiener. 
You are <laughs> Captain Joel the Wiener, baby. <laughs> um, but she wanted to, to surprise you with a, a yeah, present, yeah, so yeah, I gave yeah. her the website to order. She's nice pretty awesome, by the way. And, I'm very and, lucky. Uh, yeah. And you had those headsets on this morning. I did. I've worn them a lot. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, how many hours yeah. did you get? We aren't talking about that. Okay. Anyway, so the um, – anyway – what else did we talk about? Oh, wait. Oh, so let me finish the story real quick while you interrupted me. Huh. you got to stop doing it. I apologize. I'm talking is, about your headsets. This is about my headset. We're not talking about my headset. What? So you wear like 15 different headsets. I have. Uh, you have a lot. I, I, some airplanes I leave. Yeah. The, like the uh, Cheyenne, I always left the Clarion Lofts. So I left them hanging in the airplane. You, left, you don't wear those anymore, do you? They're, they're in my office. Oh, you don't wear them? I, I sold the Cheyenne. A year ago. Uh, six months ago. Yeah. Or same so. thing. Year six yeah, months. Yeah, it's all. It's, it doesn't and that's really and then we Nobody got cares. and then we got the four fourteen and I like and train. I like the uh, the bows or the light speeds a little better in right. the in the uh, which the is the engine. internal. Qu- I mean, there's some good A and R regardless. Yes. You have to do A and R if you're going to do any flying at all, right? Well, isn't that the topic is here? Claire we talk about flying. Well, <laughs> doing any but flying? Claire, at all? Yes, we're doing some. Yeah. Well, who? Okay. The so. Clarion lofts that work, and a lot of I know a lot of pilots that wear them in piston airplanes. I just I I like a little. Right. And the uh, the XM radio when it comes through sounds better in the Bose. Does it? Oh yeah. What is your favorite XM radio station? XM thirty nine. Of baby. course, don't. Don't tell them what it is. That's part of the, the tease. You XM go 39. Well, that's, you know, that it brings back the old days of my right. childhood. That's when I fell in love with you when you turn on XM 39. Now, when I have I have one customer that requires me to listen to country, so. Like, old country. Oh. Not not the After I'm done, country, I, 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 I. The old yeah. country. Yeah, old country. Right. And he's, he's, I've been flying for him for 15 years. Yeah. I'll listen to anything he wants. That's right. Well, he's paying the bill. Uh-oh. And then he took me along <laughs> and. Well, I go, what and are we listening to? And you go, hey, he wants to listen to that. So for three hours. Yeah, it's a long, that's a long day. Holy isn't it? smokes. When you're listening to a genre of music that just really isn't. You know, the only thing worse would have been Lawrence Welk. Mm. Oh, Every now and then. I think uh, I would have had to just jump I, I came out of the back from, I came back from I'm not Kansas. a skydiver, though, by the way. I would have that I day. came back from Kansas once, and uh, a gentleman wanted to listen to bluegrass. Ooh. Oh. After three hours, bluegrass. well, it was six, about six and a half hours of bluegrass, it, it, I was over it. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to think about that anymore. I'm getting tired just thinking about it. All right, it. so these things you, yeah, it's you know, when you're in the things. cockpit. Yeah, right. Y- the is there anything else you want to talk about today? No, see, this is a dump. You never do that. When you're doing a, a, what we're doing right now. What are we doing? We're just chatting. Oh. Never ask, what are we going to talk about next? I don't know what we're going to talk well, about Well, see, next. that's the thing. But you don't tell everybody you don't have a subject matter. That's dumb. What are you drinking in that coffee? Well, it's just water. Okay. It's just water, according to Jason. I don't know what he's putting in this thing. He's a great flight attendant, by the he, way. He, you know, the call you know button what? works pretty good. As a host, he's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. He might buy us lunch. Not a chance. Yeah, all right. Guess who's buying lunch? But I buy the lunch. co-pilot always Because, you know, we lunch. always fly for food, which is going to be the new <laughs> logo for this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hashtag fly for food. The number four. It, is it, it really? Yeah. Number four. Yeah. Hashtag fly for food. Fly for food. Yeah. Fly well, for it is, food. It, you know, seriously though, a lot of guys go flying, and what's the purpose? Hundred dollar hamburger, hundred fifty dollar hamburger, right? Why? Because it's fun. Yeah. It's for you, the food. you have a reason to go for a ride. If I ever opened up a restaurant, it would be in an airport. But you I, know what? I'm not gonna open up a restaurant. Uh, yeah. It's too hard. It's a, it's a seven days you a week. You can't fly and have a restaurant. You could. Well, no, because the That'd restaurant be owns you. You don't own the restaurant. I'd rather fly a plane. All right, let's get back to aviation. Ah, you're right. What and remember, a good pilot oh, right. is always, always learning. Always learning. All right, guys, have fun. We'll talk to you soon. It's been a pleasure. Captain Joel, the wiener. Aloha, Bob. Aloha. Shh.